everyone, it's Danielle Scow, your Pampered Chef Consultant. First, I just want to thank you guys so much for liking and sharing my channel. We've reached a thousand subscribers and I could not be more excited about it. So if you have not yet already, make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. And if you like this video that I'm about to show you, give it a like and of course a share. I promised you guys in the unveiling of the electric grill and griddle that I would do a do's and don'ts tutorial. So that is what this video is going to be about. I wanted to really try this uh, appliance out before doing this video. So I wanted to be able to cook on it a lot so I could really tell you the things to stay away from and the things to definitely try. So let's go over to our electric grill and griddle. First, how to open your grill and griddle and to move the lid up and down. So if you look on the side right here, this is going to be your release button. You're gonna use this to lay it flat, to open it, to change the different heights that you want your lid to be at. So you just pull it towards you and that's gonna open it up. The cool thing is this lever right here. It's labeled from one to six. So however high you want your lid to be, that's where you'd put it. So if you were doing it where you wanted to just like keep it warm or put heat like on a quesadilla, you could put it like that and do you see how it holds it? So like if you're just melting cheese or something like that, then the heat can still melt it, it won't smash it and stick to the top. So just depending on where you want your lid to be at. If you want it facing all the way down, then you're going to hit the release button, lay it flat, okay? So that button, important. <laughs> okay, now how to put in your different pans. This is the coolest part about this appliance is that it replaces all of those big bulky appliances that you have in your kitchen. So first, we'll just do the griddle pan. So this is the griddle, there's two. It's so easy to switch them in and out. So if you look right here, there's these latches. You're just going to stick them right underneath here and then push down and it clicks right in, okay? So you can do that on the top and bottom. So you'll just stick them right underneath and push down. You guys, look how easy that is. Now, this is the fun part, is that you don't have to have the same pan for each. So that's one thing that I have been loving. So for my bre breakfast foods, you can be making pancakes right here and then decide, okay, I wanna make bacon too, so I need my grill pan. This is how easy it is to switch out the pans. Do you see this button down here? All you do is press the button and look, it pops up and slides out. It could not be more easy. So now I'm gonna put in my grill pan, same way, just right under those little notches and push it down. And now you can make bacon on one side, pancakes on the other. Make sure you do always put in this, this, very important. See what this is? This is gonna be your drip pan, okay? This is your drip pan. It slides in really easily, easy to wash. Um, make sure it's always in. So here's do and don't number one. Do not, I repeat, do not cook scrambled eggs on your griddle. I did that one morning and unfortunately, I had taken the drip pan out to clean it so I didn't even have my drip pan in, and I had my bacon on this side, and I have a big family, so when we do eggs, like, we do eggs. So I'm cooking like 10 scrambled eggs at a time. And I have them all mixed up in my batter bowl, and I go to pour them in. Well, what's gonna happen is, see this right here? This is where all the grease, the fat, all the unwanted items are gonna go, and they go nicely into your drip pan. Well, the eggs scramble obviously runny, I poured them in and they all just started to pour out through this slot onto my countertop because the drip pan wasn't in either. There was egg everywhere. And I didn't know what to do because it was hot. So I'm like trying to like pick up the griddle because my main concern is I didn't want to ruin my, my new grill and griddle that I was so excited with egg everywhere. So I like go to pick it up but it's hot and I'm trying to move it so I can clean up the egg. So, don't number one, do not <laughs> cook scrambled eggs on this. It will not go well for you. Sunny side up, all those different kinds, 
Those are a do, scrambled is a don't, okay? And then always make sure you put your drip pan in. Another thing that I am loving to cook on this that I um, am actually making for dinner tonight is the fajitas. So it is so nice because I can pop these out again. Oh, and the top one, to pop the top one out, the button's just right up here too. So same spot, pops out easy. So I would just switch it to both my grill pans and then I'll start to show you why this is so cool because you can multi-cook on them with different heats. So let's look at the buttons. First of all, the switch, the power switch is right there. It lights up really nicely here. This is what all the different buttons are for. And the reason why I love this so much is because you can control the temperature of your bottom versus your top. So you can cook two different things on here at different temperatures. So first, you have your time button, your temperature, top and bottom, the probe, add 30 seconds, and obviously cancel. So what we're going to do right now is let's say that we're cooking fajitas. So I'm going to lay mine flat. Okay, so I'm going to want these at different temperatures because I'm going to be cooking my meat at a different temperature than I'm going to be cooking my vegetables. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you push this button in. Do you see how it starts flashing? So then I'm going to select if I want the top or the bottom. So right now it says top. So I get to say what temperature I want my top at. Now you can customize your own temperatures that you want. And then when you set the temperature at what you would like, you push it again. Now it says bottom. So now I can set it to the temperature that I want and click it when you do. Now it's heating. So it's gonna tell you when it's ready for you to put your um, food on, okay? I'm gonna just cancel that. The other great fix, so that's a good feature if you know what temperature you want it all to be at, okay? If you do not, then there is these pre-settings, which I really like. I probably use these more than anything is I can, so there's custom, which is what we just did, or you can go to your own settings. So I'm gonna go to grill. If I'm grilling, it's gonna keep it at 400 degrees. So then I would just press enter. Now it's asking me the time, so how long? Okay, so I can move it up or down, press enter when you have the time. This box means it's heating up, okay? So I can do that. Now, let's cancel. Okay, this is one of the features that I absolutely love about this product is it comes with its very own probe so that you know the temperature of the meat for whatever you're cooking, chicken, hamburger. So what you're gonna do is the probe goes in right here. Sorry, you see that little, oh, hold on, I can't see. There we go. So it clicks in right there. And then what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna stick it inside of your meat before you put it on the grill. So you'll stick it inside of the middle of the meat and that's important. Make sure you get it to the thickest point of the meat um, because that's where it's obviously going to be more raw. So you're gonna stick it into the middle of the meat and then you get to do hit the probe button. This is really cool because you can set it for the temperature as how you like your meat cooked. So depending on how you like your burgers or your steak or your chicken, you uh, medium rare, not chicken. Don't 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 do chicken at medium rare. But your steak, okay? If you like it medium, medium rare, well done. You can find the temperature as to what that would be. Stick it in, and then you come here and you set it. So whatever that temperature is, we'll just say 375. Then you're gonna set it, and when it gets to that temperature, when the meat gets that temperature, it will stop cooking. So you can have those perfect burgers every single time. It takes the guesswork out. You won't have too well done. You won't ruin your meat by overcooking it or the embarrassment of undercooking it and you cut into it and you're like, oh, hand it all back. I gotta go take it back out to the grill. So this is a lifesaver. Absolutely love it. Other things to do with your grill and griddle that I have just loved. One of my favorite things has been paninis. I have been making fresh sandwiches for my kids and myself all the time with this. It is my favorite, turkey pesto sandwiches, ranch chicken bacon sandwiches. You just get the delicious sourdough bread or the big white bread or whatever it is that you like 
and you get your sandwich ready, stick it on your grill, and then it actually has the panini setting. So I can just go right to panini. It cooks it perfect every single time. I don't even have to go spend money at those expensive um, bread shops, I guess, or all the different shops that I used to go buy these delicious hot sandwiches for. I can make them for myself and my kids every day for lunch. These healthy, delicious, hot sandwiches that come out perfect every time. So that's been a popular thing that I've liked to make on these. I've done bacon, eggs, that are not scrambled. I mean, I've done scrambled, but you already heard that story. They make great burgers, turkey burgers. Now remember, with the burgers, the fattier your burgers are going to be, obviously make sure you have your drip pan in because you will have a lot of grease going into the drip pan, which is okay because guess what? These all can go in the dishwasher. It blows my mind. When I was first using it, I had to re, I knew I had heard that, but I even went and rechecked. I'm like, this can't really go in the dishwasher. But the way that they're wrapped around the coils, they can. So you can just pop it off, throw it in the dishwasher, and they're ready to go again. Pamper Chef really has thought of everything with this pan. The other thing I have cooked on it is the waffles. The waffles turn out so good. I love these waffles. They're the perfect mix of crispiness on the outside with softness in the middle. Definitely, definitely a good purchase to have this waffle maker as well. Honestly, I pull this out pretty much every day. I love it. So those are my do's and don'ts with the Pamper Jeff electric grill and griddle. It's a mouthful to say. I have been nothing but impressed by this. Um, this appliance. I absolutely love it. It has become my number one favorite in my kitchen. Use it daily. If you do not have it, you definitely need it. Remember, you're not just buying one pan. You're buying like four different pans in one. You've got your griddle, griddle, your grill, and your waffles. But the best part is you can mix and match. I love being able to saute vegetables on the top while I'm grilling meat on the bottom. It is so perfect. I love being able to have my pancakes down here and my bacon up here. All cooking at the same time. It's amazing. You need this product. You will not be disappointed. A lot of people keep theirs out on their counter and with this sleek style, I love that it matches the um, quick cooker and the air fryer. <laughs> You can tell my videos are not scripted, not even a little bit. Um, I love that it all matches. So if you do want to keep it out on display on your counter, it still looks really good. What are some things that you want to cook on this? Give me some ideas. I want to try it.